Hi, James Clements. In my last video, we went through the basis of estimate and how important this document is to managing scope in a project. Today, we're going to talk about the basis of schedule. So once you've seen this video, you may want to go back and check out the basis of estimate video if you haven't already. So unlike the basis of estimate where we went through and we described each and every WBS element in some detail, the basis of schedule is more of an outline document that just explains the methodology, assumptions and constraints you've used to put your schedule together. It doesn't go into as much detail as a basis of estimate. When would you do it? Typically you'd do it for a bid review, when you need to explain to the bid review team how you came up with your schedule, why you were proposing that for the bid proposal. And once you start your project, you would document just how you went about the final contract schedule, explaining that to the client and the other stakeholders that are interested. Why do you do it? Its primary use is to communicate the method of schedule development. You're really trying to express confidence in the schedule to your client and other stakeholders. Let them know that you've got some method behind your schedule that aligns with the project execution strategy. You've looked at the risks and addressed the risks. So let's look at the key elements of the basis of schedule. You want to describe the relationships in the schedule, whether you've used finish to finish type relationships, finish to start and start to starts, all those type of things so that people are aware of how the schedule is put together. What are the calendars used? Regularly you're going to have disciplines and, and trades working different calendars for different periods. Who's working five days a week? Who's working seven days a week? All those type of things need to be communicated so people are aware. What allowances have you used? If you've allowed 5% extra in your labour allowances to look after holidays, sick leave, all those type of things. Anything that's not immediately visible in the schedule you need to outline. What are the metrics you use? If you've got some key metrics that you need to achieve during the project execution, now's your chance to bring them out so people are aware of what kind of targets they need to hit. And as we outlined earlier, you need to show just how the schedule aligns with the execution strategy what the critical path is and what the risks are. This is about communicating so that people can concentrate in the right areas and make sure that the schedule and the project execution are aligned. Finally, what are the reports you're going to produce? How regularly are you going to produce them? What's their distribution? And when a change happens to the schedule or is required, such as a rebaseline, what's the process that you will follow? Make sure that people follow that process and don't go off making random changes that you can't control. So what do these two documents mean for us? The basis of estimate and the basis of schedule we've been through. But they build up a much more important body of knowledge in your project, the WBS Dictionary. So along with your scope definition, your basis of estimate, your basis of schedule and how you're going to assign the work based on those groupings of work, this makes up your WBS Dictionary and becomes a crucial document in all your project control processes for the project execution. Thank you. I hope you got something out of that. Talk to you next time.